Hello everyone. In today's video, we are uh, going to continue uh, looking at uh, Queen's Gambit uh, declined positions, but it will be not via the classical three knight f6 uh, order today, but as we will see, it will be via third move a6. So the game is Hare Krishna against Kaberla, played in 2019. So d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, and a6, rather move. Black's uh, idea is to force us a decision that what we want to do with this c4 pawn. So he wants to take and then uh, protect with b5. So we recommend to take on uh, d5 in the course. He takes d5, bishop f4. So again, we get uh, this type of. Uh, Karsba structure most probably, although black has uh, sometimes possibility to to play with c5, so it's not not yet a classical Karsba. So black played knight f6, e3, bishop to d6, and bishop to g5. So basically now we have the classical uh, setup with white, so bishop. Uh, goes to g5, and black made two moves, which, uh, you know, it's it's hard to consider those that he tricked us or he win uh, half of a tempo, like a6 is basically not really uh, that useful, and the bishop is also normally going to e7, but okay, these are just minor uh, things, so of course this setup is completely playable and uh, fine for black. So c6 uh, played. Bishop to d3, castle, knight e2, everything is normal, rook e8, queen c2. So yeah, this is normally a critical uh, moment for black, so not to forget about that he developed the bishop to d6. So this pawn on h7 can, uh, can hang because of the pin on the queen. So it's time to play h6, bishop h4, and knight b to d7. Other way to play is with a5, but then you can see that it's uh, it's basically transposing to a normal cars part because we lost uh, a tempo with bishop f4 to g5 and black did with a6 a5, so it's a it's a concrete uh, transposition. But knight bd7 was played here, and this is a very tricky moment. And uh, when I was analyzing this game, it even uh, uh, took some time for uh, for the computer to understand that uh, you know something is uh, is a little bit dangerous here, so we have to be careful. And why I'm saying that because first choice of uh, uh, of the machine is to is to castle for quite a while actually, but this is simply not uh, not good. I mean, it's not outright losing for black, uh, sorry for white. But it's very dangerous, and I advise you to, you know, when uh, this setup with the bishop d6 on the board, to think uh, twice about castling because it can lead to very dangerous things. What can, uh, you know, make us for security is that this bishop is blocked on c8 at this moment. So the knight is, uh, sorry. so the knight is just in the way of the of the bishop, which actually a crucial thing in the in the following complications, which I will show, but even like this, it works for black pretty well. So the move is bishop takes h2, obviously. King takes on h2 and knight g4. So highlighting the unprotected uh, position of the bishop. So, of course, we cannot go back with the king because after queen h4, we are down a pawn and getting checkmated. So there are two options. And the better is uh, probably to play king h3 which already feels a little bit uh, unusual. The, the thing is that on king, G5, uh, king uh, g3, there is knight df6. So basically, uh, that's the difficult part of this combination, that black even has a time for a, for a um, quiet move, so to say. So it's not like a threat on a piece or, you know, something like a check or attacking uh, this h4 bishop, for example. but 
He opens this bishop, which is once again, it's a crucial part of this combination, has ideas to play knight to h5, and yeah, if the king has to go to h3, then the discover checks on the king are just uh, deadly, basically. Also, g5 is an idea at this moment, uh, since the knight is protected on g4. So bishop f6 is best, queen takes back. Problem is that our king is really, really stuck here. So h2 we cannot uh, go because of the knight, h3 because of the bishop basically. If we play f3 then the e3 pawn is uh, falling. So e4 is the best uh, move according to computer, but after h5 I would be black here. Uh, moves like h4 are in the, on the agenda and you know. If you move f-pawn, always this knight e3 is coming, just a very tough position for white. So it's uh, it's very dangerous, and if king h3, then again this same move, knight f6. So now there are these cover checks on the, on the king. Now white has an extra option compared to original bishop takes h2 ideas when, you know, the knight is already, let's say, on f8. So this uh, this knight is protected and this square is under control, but it's uh, even like this uh, once again works. So bishop f5 and then g5. Strong move. So bishop has to go to g3, and here comes the combination. And here comes a very nice move, which I believe uh, the reason why it take uh, why it took some time even for strongest engines to to spot this idea for. Uh, for black, if you want, uh, you can stop this video and uh, find a strong move for black. So it is rook to e4, extremely strong, uh, asking this bishop on f5, you know, serious questions. And if that bishop disappears, the king is super vulnerable on h3. So, for example, if bishop takes on g4, then simply knight g4 with all sorts of uh, discover checks coming. Our king cannot move. Very dangerous, probably black is, black is just better here. So instead of taking on g4, maybe relatively best is to take on c8. Queen takes on c8, and now we go away from the from the most unpleasant discover checks from the knight, but after knight e3, king h2, knight takes on f1, rook f1, let's say rook e7, the position is <clears throat> very complicated and it's uh, completely fine for black. I mean, uh, it's a question whether we can say that black is slightly better, I would say, but rook m2 pawns, uh, white pieces are kind of uh, not too well coordinated, so this is not something which which we should aim for. Okay, so I went into this uh, quite a detail, but just to show that, you know, we cannot be uh, that sure that this bishop h2 doesn't work even when the bishop is blocked. So Hare Krishna very correctly played h3, which is our typical move in this uh, in these positions when the bishop is on uh, d6, just to make sure bishop h2 is not happening. So it's a very important uh, move. And here black played a, a strange move to me. I mean, I would expect something like knight f8, for example, in this position. That looks very normal. Maybe bringing the knight to e6, sorry. So bringing the knight to e6, playing a5 at some point, you know, just the just the typical uh, Queen's Gambit declined the play from black. And we can say that he achieved something. We played h3, and h3 doesn't work that well with f3, e4. Even though that will be still our idea to, to do that, but... Uh, we, we have some other ideas, as it is explained in the in the course, but f3, e4 is still there, of course. So instead of this, b5 was played. And yeah, why I don't like this move? Because, uh, you know, first of all, it, it weakens c6, so it, it will be not strong anymore in this game, because, you know, pawn is not going backwards, and if it's, this pawn is going forward, we are always going to take it and play against the isolated pawn on d5. So there will be some structural problems for black. And on the other hand, now, you know, since black played b5, we are pretty much never playing f3. So 
Normally, black should play uh, b5 as a reaction to f3. So to me, it's a central initiative from white from uh, some counter play from coming from the side towards the center. But, you know, playing it uh, so quickly, like white did not promise that uh, we, are, we are playing f3 for sure. So, yeah, to me, it's, it's a little bit unusual decision. But, okay, we will see what in this game, what should we do if uh, we cannot play f3. So castles, of course, bishop b7. Hare Krishna played rook a2, e, e, rook a to d1. Sorry. So it's a very natural move. Rook a to c1 would have been maybe my choice. It also looks very natural, but rook a d1 also makes a lot of sense. So what is the point of the move? Point is that we are completely ready to meet uh, c5 with dc, and then the rook is absolutely perfectly placed on uh, on d1 already eyeing this pawn. So that's uh, that's very very nice. So black went queen c7 out of the pin, and now bishop f5. Also an idea which is worth uh, knowing. Normally, it only works uh, when black already committed to h6. So if we just play bishop f5, let's say with the pawn on h7, then black plays g6. And we either have to take on d7, which is like not the best trade for us, or go back and pretty much we did not achieve anything. So normally this f5 square, I mean, it's pretty logical. It's it's somewhat weakened when the pawn is on h6 because, you know, if uh, g6 uh, would have been played at this moment, then the refutation is pretty easy. So we just take and f takes is not possible because the queen is coming and the, the knight is falling in the next move. So... And otherwise, it creates a tricky situation with the knights, of course, because uh, d7 knight cannot really move because of bishop f6, and kind of black has to watch out for both uh, both captures here, and also the, uh, bringing the rook to c8 is uh, not so trivial because it will be pinned by the bishop. So it's just a nice uh, square for the bishop. Nevertheless, the next move is... Uh, I mean, it's hard to make... a a move with black to be honest so as i said knights are not really moving here bishops are definitely not moving where to put the rooks i mean if uh, this rook is coming to to d8 it is pinned so like you know this is actually a very nice example that what this uh, mutual attack by the bishop uh, pair means so here simply there is bishop d7 and the knight should take back on d7 for on f6 not be any problems here one of the Heavy piece is gonna take back, let's say the rook, and after bishop f6, gf, uh, any move we want, I believe something like queen f5, and you know, it's such king side, uh, black is in huge uh, trouble. So this is one uh, problem, and if rook c8, then you know the other capture. So now bishop d7 could be met by knight d7, but bishop f6 cannot be, cannot be met by anything else than gf, and uh, again, very very bad for uh, black so it's tough and maybe for this reason very awkward looking move rook ab8 was played but uh, I, I don't think that black was too happy with his position at this moment already so uh, it's hard to exactly say what is the point of rook ab8 next move he moved the bishop away to a8 then queen b7 but yeah, i'm not so sure that I mean, it's certainly not enough for anything good, but to trying uh, to find anything better, it's also not so easy. Maybe good or bad, c5 should have been tried. I mean, it's not a dream position. Let's say queen c5, rook d2, with the other rook coming to d1, and knight is going to d4. Very unpleasant uh, position. Knights are still, uh, you know, stuck by defending each other. So white is better, but at least it looks a little bit more normal, maybe than rook b8. So first step went really well for Hare Krishna. Like minor pieces are very well placed, and uh, black has some uh, weaknesses. So now he played uh, rook to c1. It's kind of uh, step two, improving the rooks a little bit, putting pressure on the c file. So bishop a8, and now he played uh, rook f to d1. Which is a good move, 
of course but i like uh, maybe another solution a little bit better basically it, uh, it would have been uh, a clear stabilizer of uh, of our advantage so this uh, bishop takes d7 so if the, uh, if the queen takes of course we spoil uh, black structure so knight has to take and of course we don't give up this bishop for no reason but uh, we have bishop g3 very strong move so immediately trading black sparrow bishop and uh, highlighting the fact that this c5 square is is extremely weak c6 pawn is a backward pawn so we just trade here and then most probably remaneuver the knight towards b3 super unpleasant position without uh, without the dark squared bishop so it was interesting but instead rook d1 also good queen b7 yeah i mean so black is a very strong player 25 52 but it was simply very tough to to find any plan now he has uh, some ideas maybe to play like c5 and then d4 but yeah it's uh, it's rather like a dream i would say than uh, than reality so hari krishna played uh, bishop to g3 takes g3 knight takes g3 and now knight f8 was played so at least the knights are uh, and d7 was an extremely unfortunate square for the knight e6 could be better so that's black's idea now to play this g6 knight e6 and then if he's lucky maybe c5 but once again c5 is or uh, is not an equalizer so and now very nice positional move knight b1 improving the knight g6 bishop goes back knight e6 and knight to d2 so now black uh, played rook c8 finally threatening to to play c5 i mean of course these things like c5 dc and if black plays d4 i believe there are multiple good ways for white i mean it's good to play knight e4 probably e4 is also just fine and uh, there is nothing for the pawn so rook c8 the knight is just there knight b3 h5 and now knight c5 this is a concrete idea from uh, from Hare krishna it had to be well calculated but he did that so so why not 92 was uh, also just great so the idea is to first uh, play knight f4 and it's actually not a big problem so let me uh, let me just make some random move for black like rook c7 so to have uh, such a structure here is not an issue at all i mean d4 is definitely not a weakness but a strong pawn in this uh, case um, blockading c6 and the uh, doubled f pawns are also rather good than bad because with f5 uh, we can target this uh, weak square of g6 so this would have been also an interesting idea he played knight c5 trade knight d7 so it's enough if you just look at the uh, the minor pieces of each side to to understand who is better so queen c2 h4 knight e2 and finally black tried c5 i mean it's kind of bad luck that it doesn't work but if he would have played king g7 then probably he could never try c5 because white plays uh, knight f4 the idea of bishop takes g6 uh, sacrifice is huge so black has to play knight f8 and uh, you know the the dream of playing c5 is, is pretty much gone at this moment without uh, without the knight supporting so we can do different things here i mean making a move like we need to at some moment uh, going towards the h4 pawn looks nice any moment to double the rooks like rook c3 uh, rook c1 maybe even triple at some moment so we have many ideas black has two weak pawns so and the horrible bishop on a8 so he tried to get some activity with c5 but uh, once again Hare krishna well calculated this bishop takes 
and G6 idea. So F FG6, unfortunately for black CD4 doesn't do anything good because uh, there is another intermediate move from white and after King F7, the queen enters, King F6, Knight D4. So white has already two pawns and uh, it's fair to assume that uh, it's either he is either going to be more mater material or just going to give checkmate to that king. So also completely losing fg6 queen g6 was played here are many tempting continuations were there uh, for white Hare Krishna went for a materialistic one hard to criticize him for that so he went dc5 the pawn is not uh, possible to take back because uh, this rook is on e8 hanging at the end of the line so knight c5 rook c5 rook c5 queen e8 he played uh, knight e5 but now a check picked up the four pawn which uh, which is already like some material advantage for white and uh, after queen g7 a smart move was uh, was made since all of a sudden it's black who is uh, interested in keeping the the queens on the board because that's uh, can be the source of his uh, his counterplay with the extra piece but after queen g3 uh, it did not uh, materialize so knight d7 b4 this is just a technically uh, winning position for white which Hare Krishna converted very quickly and very confidently so let's see how he did it knight e5 queen g7 knight went to d4 king f6 so basically here we have three connected passers but the problem is that the rooks are not active at this moment uh, so very nice move was played at this moment a4 so from the other side of the board, the rooks uh, can join, and then it's pretty much game over. So b a four, rook a one, bishop c six, and c six, rook a four. Unlucky for black that again two pawns are hanging. So king e five, rook takes a six. So now we have five pawns for a piece with b five coming. White played, uh, sorry, black played knight before, but it fails to acute tactical sequence so now we give f4 check king f5 g4 check and after king if, uh, e4 we just pin this knight and uh, basically that's winning the knight if rook b8 we can either pin with rook b1 or just give a check and uh, and then take the knight so the last moves were queen f3 rook takes b4 rook c5 of course we have to be a little bit careful because suddenly the king is active from black but Rook b2 secures the second uh, rank and three connected passers are just winning f6, rook c8, f7, rook f8, rook f1, and uh, in this position, uh, black resigned the game. Simply, there is not, nothing much to do. So, rook is so perfectly placed. We will just push this pawn, and when needed, we play rook g2, and that's, that's the game basically. So, uh, that's why he resigned. Pretty nice game from Hare Krishna, basically sh showing that uh, how to play when opponent kind of preventing our F3 E4 idea way too early, so without waiting for F3 even. So in this case, it's it's good not to touch our uh, central pawns, but just to switch to positional mode and uh, so either prepare against. Uh, I mean prepare against the c5 idea and then uh, try to transfer the knight to the to target the weak squares of c5 or or uh, c6 okay so thank you for watching and uh, see you soon uh, for a new video